everybody. Welcome to Houston Life on this Thursday, July 9th, also known as Friday, Friday Eve. Eve. That's something I learned from you, Courtney. <laughs> you gotta look forward to it, right? Gotta look forward. How about like Friday Eve? What would you call Saturday? Like the day after Friday? Right. <laughs> but Saturday is already a good day. <laughs> it is. It's so sometimes though it can get you too close to Sunday, which then puts everybody in a tailspin. You know what I mean? Yeah, I know. And then you have the Sunday scaries because Monday's rolling around. Right. Isn't it interesting though that it's July 9th already? July 9th, like we're approaching halfway through the month, right? It's crazy. People dance. are still sort of working from home. Brandon, for a while, was going back to the office. Now he's back working from home. Yeah. And it's just, I don't know, you know, vacations canceled, we're home all the time. Right. It's a whole new world. It's a good thing we like each other. I, well, it's true. It's a good. Th I mean, that's what we said in the beginning of this, uh, uh, you know, pandemic when the boys were kind of at each other's throats and we said, you know, this is all you got. All four of us right here. Yeah. So you better know how to embrace it, you know. Um, but what's funny is Orlando uh, still working from home, too. That keeps getting pushed back. And uh, there's been a couple times that he's had to go in the office or go on site somewhere. And he puts pants on and he's like, gosh, my legs just feel I so know. weird it's wearing so pants. so uncomfortable. <laughs> I know. How about Gabe Saglier yesterday? Did you all see his photo that he posted? Because he's so expert. professional and he's always great and he's so much fun to have around. But the wide shot taken by his wife that he posted. <laughs> on Instagram had like his board shorts on and he had a, tie. a dress shirt and a tie on <laughs> with a board shorts. I love I it. I love that idea. I want to start wearing shorts to work. I've only done it one day. I've only done it done it one day so far and it was when you were still at home. Okay. It was a casual Friday. We can wear shorts. I say let's bring back the pajama day. I'm ready. Let's bring back a jammy day. Well I'm a fan of this but remember there's an issue with that for me. Oh, yeah, you don't wear pajamas. That's right. I don't own them. Right. We're going to have to work on the black So box. that would be, yeah. We'll get the black for you, ready. For you, not for me. I do wear pajamas. Okay, well. PJs, that's your, jammies. That's your choice. Jammy jams, that's whatever your, you want to call them. Just more things to wash. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I am so glad it's Thursday. We need a break Is from that your mom all calling? of the breaks. Okay. <laughs> My mom is at home, like, horrified, right? <laughs> She's like, are you sure you want to talk about those things on the air? I'm like, Mom, everybody... I'm an open book, Mom. <laughs> I'm an open book. <laughs> Very few secrets around this, uh, this side of the desk. So all week long, we have really been having a great time with Lauren Kelly, and she also stuck at home, right, working from home. She did that paint-by-numbers thing, and then the cardboard float that Gabe helped her with, and then that rainbow... Crep crepe cake yesterday. Yeah. It wasn't really, I mean, if you saw the finished product, it, it didn't exactly look much like a rainbow cake. Sort of like a pile of brown. Well, one side things. was brown, the other side was colored. I mean, it was way better than what I would do. So, I, you know. It was a great, it was a great effort. And also, it's, it's 1.03 p.m. right now. I mean, she has such a short window of time to complete these tasks. But I think they're sort of getting better and better as the week goes on. Oh, yeah. And she is joining us live now from her house where she's about to learn what today's challenge is. Hey, Lauren. Hey guys, I'm here, I'm outside. I did all 10,000 dishes from that cream cake from yesterday. Yes, I know. And now I'm ready to learn of today's surprise. Exactly, What's you're like- it gonna be? You're like, take out for the next 25 days. I'm not yeah. dirtying the kitchen yeah. anymore. <laughs> okay, so you are outside by the rusty trusty HL yes. vehicle, if I do say so myself. Uh, today's challenge, yes. Lauren, you ready for it, girl? We're just going to let you jump in here. You get to decorate the car, okay. and you have to put okay. the words on it, honk, if you love Houston life. That is so embarrassing. Okay. And then... <laughs> Do I get to drive it around afterwards? Well... You, uh, that remains to be seen. It remains to be seen, but you got to decorate oh, okay. the car, and those car. that okay. phrase okay. needs to be on the car. And for extra bonus points, I would put honk it on more than once. Houston. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Honk if you love Houston life. <laughs> Okay, okay. And your question about do okay. you have to drive it around? I mean, Lauren, what were cars made to do? <laughs> made for. I mean, I have the key, guys. I have the key, right? <laughs> so I'm assuming that the decoration supplies are open. The open the trunk They're or the back, back seat? As usual. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's go to the back seat first. Okay. Unlock this. And oh my! Happy birthday! <laughs> Are these the Did leftover these balloons from, from our office? Like Used, birth, yeah. deflated oh. balloons. Well, from we're recycling. Oh my God. Okay, Too bad we on. didn't put the pregnant mannequin in there to go with her. <laughs> oh, that is super creepy. Just be really careful with these numbers. Texas I've birthday. Had experience with these where I 
pop them in the car. Oh, Texas too. Texas is second birthday. Okay. I might actually put these in my house. I see some beautiful floral prints, some flowers. Oh, a, a hat for me, party time. It's definitely birthday decorations. Oh, there's a cute little mermaid. Oh, oh yeah, that was no. mine. Wait, I is will tell it, you what. Is it street legal to oh. actually decorate the exterior of a car like with balloons? So I know this <laughs> answer, legal, Derek, because I got in trouble when I was a senior in high school. You cannot have it around your face because it is an obstruction of view. So well, I can yeah. decorate around where I don't have to look out. So I'll have to put like the little bubble, the window around it. So I'll have to get really creative. I don't know if the balloons will last if I tr if I go, but you know, they may really make it nice to just tie onto this rack up top and you know, <laughs> have a yeah. ginormous two okay. connected to the car. So we'll tie them uh, we'll tightly tie because we we'll don't want them floating away and getting into the mouths of our sea life down in the bay. No, that exactly. would not be We need to use them good. again someday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> well, All right, guys. Well, I need the work. whole hour. Yeah, go for okay. it. You're going to do a great job. And a reminder that yes. there could be uh, some twists and turns coming. So, Lauren, we're going to check back in with you in about 20 minutes. I, I hope it goes well. Honk right. if you love Houston life. All right. How great is that? It seems kind of desperate, beep, beep. right? Driving around honking. <laughs> and Good luck. You, you can check Lauren out on Facebook Live right now if you are curious to see her progress step by step. And how sad if nobody honks. <laughs> I hope someone honks. Go find her. Honk. Multiple times. People are like, what, honk if you love what? What now? Oh, that dance program in the shopping mall. Yeah, oh. I saw it once. Never watched it again. <laughs> the dance program. The dance program. Hey, speaking of dance, the Houston Ballet. So fantastic. Do you follow these guys oh, on yeah. Instagram? So anytime I see one of the dancers out in public, I sort of like sneak away like, Brandon, oh my gosh, don't look, that's Karina over there. Like, just because we don't want to bother them, right? But they are so talented. One of the most prestigious ballet companies mm -hmm. around the world, right? And these dancers are, you know, in this weird limbo right now where canceled performances loom, right? I Absolutely. mean, they're not on stage as they normally would be. And so what they've done is they've taken to Instagram, they're doing these really cool virtual performances, and we're about to tell you about some that are very special happening Friday on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. This is so awesome, and this is really to celebrate uh, the 50th anniversary. The season, of course, was canceled, and this is this dance project is basically a conclusion to the 2019-2020 season. Um, but this is unbelievable. So they all the dancers record their part in their own setting. Yeah. I love it. And the boxes keep growing and growing and growing. And um, it's going to premiere freely on Friday at 10 a.m. Um, on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. It was, of course, recorded via Zoom. Everybody knows Zoom. Everybody knows how to operate Zoom. But how awesome is this? Yeah, it's great. I mean, they're all so much fun. And you can probably hear a little bit of the audio in the background. That's Billy okay, Idol's Dancing With parade. Myself. Kind of, so um, it's a really fun thing to watch. Check it out online. And we do have some info on our website. HoustonLife.tv if you want to tune in. And it's about a seven minute video, but it's captivating. And I do love all of the dancers. I follow them and I love Karina and her garage uh, pr practicing and performing and her. And I thought, I I'm, can I just drive by and watch? Yeah, I know, right? From my car? <laughs> Wait, behind your like plexiglass? Yes. Also, Harper Waters, he's a really fun one to follow yeah. on Instagram. And he's got. I mean, the longest legs I've ever seen. And he does all kinds of routines and heels. He's so flexible. He's great. So uh, give our ballet some love and definitely tune in online. And so many of our performers in the city are just, you know, waiting and hoping that these numbers can finally go down so they can get back on stage where they belong. Absolutely. We hope so. But check out that video. It's really awesome. Yeah, they're doing some cool things. One of the dancers even did this thing where he put on a pair of pants without using his hands. Yeah. Did you see that one? Yeah, that was a big TikTok uh, <laughs> phenomenon. Yeah. Even Simone Biles did it on a, ha a handstand. Um, put, what did she do? Take, put pants, shirt on or shirt off in a handstand position. No it was crazy. Way. Yes. And you know how hard handstands are? Yeah. I mean, that is hard. I wonder if we should try doing that. We can. I think it would be fun. Try putting pants on without actually... Oh, I think I would need probably like really big pants, right? Because if the pants are kind of tight, how would you... Yeah. I don't know. I guess we'll figure it out. So Work through the kinks.
<sighs> work through the kinks. So typically here at Houston Life, we do a 9 a.m. Zoom call every morning. And, and there's Teams and there's Zooms, Zoom, there's GoToMeeting, there's uh, so many different ways to, to do this, right? So we have our 9 a.m. call and one of our producers, our senior producer, Erin Montoya, today is her first day back from maternity leave after having her second child. And what was funny is this morning on the 9 a.m. call, it was the first time we had seen her face in quite some time, but she was the only person on the call who actually launched her video. Right, we never do. No, the early calls we don't. No. But then we did another call at 9.15, I think, with right. another department. And there we had a little bit of Zoom. But isn't it interesting how things are still going wrong on these calls? Oh, of course. And I, I feel like, you know, in the beginning, there were so many of us that were novices, right? We didn't know how to work all of these platforms and our families weren't quite used to it. And so it's, it's going to go, you know, there's lots of things that go wrong on these video chats and meetings. Um, but have you got, have you embarrassed yourself on one of these calls? Um, I was masking on one, and our GM Jerry, you know, had a had my like a face mask. Face mask. Oh and yeah, I, I was never on call. call in with video, especially like in a giant group setting when it's like our station, you know, mul like hundred people or something. No, I'm here. I mean, but this was also during the time of homeschooling, so there was a lot of like multitasking going on. Yeah, I had the AirPods in, and so I was able to listen. But then I was kind of called out. You know, why aren't you? Sh why are you the only one not showing video? Are you really there? That kind of thing. And I, well, I, I am here, but I just so have to a mask show on. The masks. Yeah. So I don't. I mean, that's not necessarily embarrassing, but. Well, a lot of times when I am on these calls, I am, I'm actually getting ready in the morning. Yeah. So I might be in the bathroom, I might be getting dressed or doing other things. Right. And so you're there and it's like, Derek, did you hear that? Derek? And you have to like quickly unmute. Right. Right. And to respond. But yeah, I'm paying attention the whole time. But people have, oh my gosh. I mean, there have been some, some unfortunate mishaps. I would say one of the most common things is when people think they're muted and they're not. Right. Or the other way around. Or the other way around. They're muted and they're trying to talk and they you know, don't realize people can't hear them. We had a call a couple weeks ago where one of us was not muted and people could hear us. Did you know this? I don't, I don't think so. We were in, we had finished the show at 1.58 p.m. and at 2 o'clock. Oh, yes. Because someone had scheduled a meeting for 2 o'clock. It's yeah. like, can't we at least go to the bathroom after the show? Right, and I think I said, well, I'm not sure, am I on or something, but it was in here. Yeah. I, you know. Yeah. But I feel like if, well, unless you're looking for feedback, conversation, everybody should be muted when you, when you But there are so in. many people that we were on that call one day and more than a hundred people were on that call. I remember someone was like, what well, are we going to do for dinner? <laughs> what are we doing for lunch? Yeah. What restaurant can we call? We you know, the other thing in? that's super annoying on those calls when you are, you know, when no, it's video not required, but lots of people are in. When people are typing? Oh, I knew that's uh, what you were going to say. Oh, my word. Wait, didn't uh, that just happen? Didn't that just happen? It just also did. This and week? I felt like saying, I mean, <laughs> enough with the woodpecker. Can we please just mute <laughs> if you're going to continue to type? It also mute. didn't even sound like typing. It didn't sound it real. It sounded, it sounded like, like someone was dragging chains across a floor. And I was like, okay, am I going to be the first person to pipe up, or I, is someone else going to be like, hey, uh, whoever's typing no loudly, could anything. you please stop? It sounded, or almost like someone had taken a, um, like a very crunchy wrapper, and it was like, creak, 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 into the microphone. It was so the strange. Call. In or, the meantime, or they were <laughs> typing like this with their phone. I, I don't know. It was the, and I thought to my, and I'm looking around, I'm looking around because I was in a space by myself, but I, I was kind of having a conversation with myself thinking, can anybody else hear this? Is anybody, it was sort of like nails on the chalkboard. Yeah. I, I'm so hypersensitive to it, even with my kids at home. And even if they just say, mom, I mean, everybody knows your kids are home. It's not a secret, you know, they all know this, but I'm always muting or when they come in the room, you know. Well, not always muting. In the in the early days, no. there, there was one day when I could hear you talking to the boys. I, talking to the boys and then a neighbor another time oh, walked no. up, I think, too, right? 
You know what those commercials where people, they're like the webcam mishaps, like car insurance, Progressive is doing one now, yes, and that's really funny. Cute. But a long time ago, I mean, this was happening before COVID and before working from home. There's that uh, commercial where the guy's coughing and he has his laptop and he's dressed up from the top you know, from yeah, the top down, but he needs to work from home. below the belt, like the laptop flies off and he's in his boxers. Well, it's so funny how that commercial happened and that real is life. real life. And we even had a chef on the show a few months ago. You were working remotely. Then I didn't see it. Then thing. you didn't see it. <laughs> we didn't talk about this. I flew blind the entire okay, three we had Maybe some of our viewers remember this. We had a chef on the show and he was making this thing. And I think the person helping him with a Zoom call, you know, he's between the stove and the island in okay. the kitchen and the person holding the phone um, was I guess not coming in close enough and so he was like mm, 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 mm. Oh. I'm like, just say just say like hey, hey. My, my sister is holding the camera my wife is holding the camera like come in wife like come in a little bit closer so when he's like oh oh doing this and the camera gets in closer then all of a sudden his son walks around the corner into the kitchen in his underwear yeah Okay, didn't you didn't see, see that? No, didn't oh, see it anything. happened live right here on Houston Life. No. It did. I told I didn't have a way to see anything. So reacting to video or anything like that was was acting. What do you mean you didn't have a way to see anything? I was on a delay, so the only thing I could see was five seconds later. But don't we have an engineering department that could have like sent some equipment to your house and hooked you up? <laughs> Just asking. It's a simple <laughs> question. <laughs> You couldn't see anything from I home. I could not. Well, that is ridiculous. Unacceptable. Hey, we want to know what is... We, we love our engineers. It's Derek we love Short, KPRC.com. <laughs> <laughs> not saying That's a word. actually not my email address. Um, so Actually, it's on the know, bottom of the screen. We Anybody can know what's it. happened to you guys at home. Any mishaps, any unexpected moments. You know, we're all friends here. We're all family. We're all human. Things go wrong. Did you fall asleep at your Zoom call? Because that happens, apparently. That's a very popular thing. <laughs> no. If you did, please tell us. Please send it. It's, it happens? Yes. Yeah. Oh, well, that's embarrassing. Falling asleep on camera. Okay, let us know what's happened to you. We'll share your comments coming up later in the show. Okay, and if that happens here, let us know, too, if we fall asleep. <sighs> Still ahead on today's show, we have a beginner's guide to exploring the great outdoors. We've got tips from a seasoned hiker for your next camping trip. We'll be right back. Well, welcome back. If you're planning to, uh, trying to plan a camping trip, but have zero outdoor experience, well, Listen up. While this can be a great way to unwind and connect with loved ones, it also requires a little bit of planning. Yes, that can eliminate a lot of headaches if you plan in advance. Outfitter and owner of Far Flung Outdoor Center, Greg Hennington, is here with tips to help us plan the perfect camping trip. Welcome to the show, Greg. It's great to see you. I love your virtual background there of Big Bend National Park. And, you know, it is so true that we're seeing road trips. Uh, the numbers are skyrocketing, RV trips. Before someone sets out on one of these adventures, whether they're seasoned or not. I mean, let's say they're a complete novice. Let's just sort of break it down. We would love to have your advice. What's the first step? Well, you know, it's, it's easy to say this, but plan, plan, plan. We, uh, we are enjoying a lot of folks coming out to Big Ben right now because of the, you know, they just want to get out of the house and Big Ben is a wide open place and it's a great place to bring the family. We're seeing a lot of families coming out. But really planning ahead is, is the key. And that, that, that's everything from the right gear to uh, understanding that temperatures are hot. They're hot all over Texas, but you know, we're kind of the, the linchpin for heat out here. <laughs> so just planning ahead uh, is the key. And, and I, I have an old saying, there's no such thing as bad weather, only bad gear. That is true, you know, and before we get into the conversation of gear, because you, you can't just walk in there without having the right shoes and backpack and water and things right. like that. But real quickly uh, about Big Bend National Park, it's currently closed right now, but um, is it expected to open soon? Yeah, good question. So we've got two parks that butt up against each other. One is Big Bend National Park, and the other one is a Big Bend Ranch State Park. The state park is actually open. Uh, it's about 250,000 acres. The national park is 801,000 acres. And we, we're we hoping it'll open up. They, they're on a 14-day quarantine, and I think there's about five days left of that. And so we're hoping that they'll – and it'll be a minimal 
uh, offering, but at least people can get in and, and see the park. We're hoping that'll happen in the next week or so. And Greg, I understand that, I mean, while it's so great that as people have been quarantined at home during COVID-19, people want to get out. I understand you've seen a lot of people just sort of head that way without the proper gear, without do yeah. doing their research. So let's get into the nitty gritty and break it down when it comes to required necessary camping equipment. We can't say that enough. Let's start with the tents. Yeah, so if you're going to go camping uh, this time of year, uh, you know, you, you, you need to you need to plan a tent that's uh, don't go out. In there, there are all kinds of prices and, and brands out there. Uh, don't go cheap on the brand because out here, particularly, we get afternoon rainstorms and we get uh, high winds sometimes. So you want to go with more of a dome type tent, uh, much more stable in the wind. Spend a little extra money. There's all kinds of good brands and the big stores all have them. And get something that'll that when you're in the middle of a rainstorm, an afternoon rainstorm, that you're not just you're, you're wetter inside the tent than you were outside the tent. And also, um, you have to think about hydration, how to keep yourself hydrated on those hikes, and soup. Just as important as your tent, you've got to have the right shoes. Right. Right. Yeah. And so the shoes are important. Now, out here in the desert, unless you're doing some really heavy backpacking, which frankly, this time of year, I wouldn't recommend yeah. carrying a heavy weight, just a nice, good pair of, of, of well broken, in uh, uh, all terrain shoes like a Merrill or there's, a, again, a lot of brands out there. Uh, just something. Obviously, it's not the place to come with a brand new pair of shoes. Uh, one of the things that's interesting I found is when you're sizing shoes for hiking, always go up at least a half a size, maybe some cases a full size, so that when you're um, when you're moving around, particularly when you're going downhill, you're not getting that toe jam thing mm -hmm. going on. Again, spend a little extra money on shoes. Uh, you know, the shoes that you had 50 years ago, probably not a good got good place to have them. Okay, so good shoes, a good tent. Maybe you can save a bit on the water bottle. You say don't skimp when it comes to the water bottle. A lot of folks, interestingly, and I guess, you know, it makes sense that people be worried about snakes and critters when mm -hmm. they go camping. But you say that the primary concern really should be about the heat. And this week, temperatures are expected to reach 109 degrees. That's not That's cold. That's correct. Yeah, so you guys are in Houston. I spent some time in Houston in my early years, and you're sort of like a wet blanket. You know, when you walk outside, you know, you sort of know it's hot, mm -hmm. and it just sort of smothers you. Uh, but out here, because of the def definition of a desert is its rate of evaporation, uh, that sweat that's on you is moving off of you as fast as it hits your skin. And so while it sort of feels good, you know, you've always heard people say, I love the dry heat. Well, the dry heat really will sneak up on you really, really fast. And so I would, uh, hydration, it really, you know, water bottles are water bottles. There's all kinds of things on your back, things that you can carry. But, uh, we, you know, the, the heat factor, getting ahead of your hydration is really important. And, and, and carrying a liter of water a day, real critical out here. Absolutely, especially when you're talking about the heat, if you're not used to being out and, and hiking mm -hmm. and walking mm -hmm. uh, in mm -hmm. that those temperatures mm -hmm. as well. A little bit about Far Flung Outdoor Center. You're, you're living the good life after you left Houston and your banking job to uh, settle there with your <laughs> wife. And uh, is it Belinda, your wife? Belinda is my wife, uh-huh. Yeah, and she so and living, the, uh, living the good life, the two of you. Yeah, as we say, living the dream. <laughs> We've been out here quite, quite a number of years. It's 28 years for me. And uh, we, uh, we operate, uh, own and operate uh, this little adventure resort. Uh, we've got lodging and we have all kinds of different tours, Jeep tours and ATVs. We started as a river company many years ago and sort of grew it um, over the years. And we're just, we're just right outside the west entrance to Big Bend National Park. Very nice. It sounds like a beautiful place to live and work. Greg Hennington with Far Flung Outdoor Center. Thanks so much for your time, and uh, everybody stay safe this summer. Guys, thank you for having me on. Sounds good. We'll see you soon. And to our Take viewers, care. we will have a link to connect with Greg on our website, HoustonLife.tv. We'll be right back. Well, welcome back to Houston Life. Thanks for sticking with us. We're going to get to some of your viewer comments. Earlier, we were chatting about, you know... <laughs> We're chatting about what to wear to bed. My mom texted me and she was like, yeah, dude, TMI. Sorry, mm -hmm. mom. You know I love you. I hope you're not And you ashamed. brought it up. I totally forgot. I know, I know. Um, should we get to some of our <laughs> other comments, though?
<laughs> we'll put them up on the screen now. Sharon says honk honk. Oh, honking in support of Houston Life. We yes, that, for Lauren. Thank you. Absolutely. And Pamela writes in, excuse me, ma'am, look at those guns. Oh, wow, your <laughs> arms look so good. I know who's been lifting weights. Well, thanks, Pamela. Oh, Pamela, that is so sweet. It's actually a special shirt Courtney wears um, that just has like <laughs> muscles printed on it. Just kidding. <laughs> Allison writes in, during a district-wide training, someone was not on mute and <gasps> loudly snoring. snoring. Shut up. No oh, way. Wow. That is really, really good. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. I hope you all recorded that. Somebody had to take out their cell phone and record it. Maybe it was just the sound, but still. But you know, the funny moments, the unexpected, that's what makes that meeting so memorable, right? Otherwise, if that per person hadn't fallen asleep, would you even remember it? Oh, just another meeting. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, boy. Okay, okay. What well, are we doing now? I don't know. I think we're, <laughs> we're going to go to Lauren okay. Kelly. So let's take a quick commercial break. And after that break, we're going to head back out to Lauren's house to see how she's doing with today's challenge. Okay. Yeah. She's, she's got doing the, good. She's got the writing on there. I think maybe it's time to add a little twist. What do you say? Oh, yeah. Twist's coming after the break. Okay. Well, welcome back. We do have meteorologist Eric Bright standing by with the weather update. And, you know, I'm just going to say it's sweltering. Oh. Does that is, cover it? Uh, it is sweltering. <laughs> All right, I'm done. <laughs> yeah, it's sweltering. Thanks, and it's Eric. Be, and it's going to be this way for the next few months. <laughs> and, so I can go on vacation until October, right? And that's the end of my speech. <laughs> that's the end of my speech. You know, I have, to go back to, I have to go back to your last um, segment, the uh, viewer comments. Courtney, I have to second the shoulders, the arms. Oh. Pretty amazing. Oh, your check's in the mail. Thanks, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. They're bigger than mine. Fortunately, I don't have to wear sleeveless shirts to work, and I can hide my arms. <laughs> All right. Outside right now, we've got some haze, Saharan dust haze out there. But the big story is, as Courtney mentioned, the swelter. It feels like 108 on the southwest side of town. The heat index is in the dangerous category. We've got temperatures in the mid-90s. You add 10 degrees onto that or more in some places, and you get heat index readings 107, 106, 105. That's very near heat heat advisory criteria, so be very, very careful this afternoon. South breezes 10 to 15, helping to keep you a little bit cooler, but no rain today. Exact track radar is quiet. We're looking at high temperatures right near 96 degrees, give or take partly cloudy skies. Again, no umbrellas unless you're using them for shade. 80s this evening. It's going to be a sultry evening. We get down into the upper 70s at best for a low temperature by tomorrow morning. And look at this, guys. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, we're looking at the actual air temperature being at 100 degrees. That doesn't factor in the humidity. Yeah. Feels like temperatures 105 to 110. Oh, boy. Yeah, oh, ouch is right. Eric, thanks so much. Yeah, I appreciate just the good need news. A minute to let that sink in. <laughs> I know. So modest to hide your arms, Eric, says the no, athlete and you... marathon runner. Give me a break. Yeah. No sleepless shirts for me. Save it, dude. Right. We don't want to hear it. I need to do the CrossFit thing. Come yeah. on over. It yeah. works. It works for you, You're obviously. Sweet. You're doing just fine, Eric. Love you. Thanks. <laughs> See you later. Okay, why don't we take a moment to check back in with Lauren Kelly uh, about today's challenge. So as a recap, we asked her to decorate one of our Houston Life cars. And uh, wow, decorate it. She did. Lauren, how's it going? How you feeling? Oh, oh, hey, guys. Don't mind <laughs> me just decorating this car. Um, what's really cool is that during quarantine, I've had to do all these birthday car parades, and I was just telling our viewers on Facebook Live that I think the best one I went to, my sister threw my brother-in-law, Adam, for his 40th birthday, a huge car parade, and they had socially distant mariachis. So I'm trying to remember, like, how we decorated my car for that, uh, and I'll try not to make it look too much like a baby gender reveal. <gasps> yeah, I know, oh. right? <laughs> I know. Oh, wow. Okay, and so... People are going to be like, hey! <laughs> now, remember... Remember, as you know, there, there's a twist coming. And so earlier, we asked you to include the words or the phrase, honk if you love Houston life, somewhere on the car as part of your decorations. And that's because you will be driving around to see how many people you can get to honk at you. But there's okay. more. Yeah, and be sure that that, you know, it's very clearly, that writing is very clear because you want people to honk, right? Okay, but that's not all. Okay. We did forget to mention one small little detail. So while you're driving... Oh, forgot! So we have a very special song we need you to be blasting in the car. I'm going to uh, have our control room play that song right now just okay. uh, so okay. you can get familiar with it.
watch a show, never know. You guys. Who be next yes, and you can get out and do a little dance. <laughs> this is a good version. Do you see neighbors, I can get involved. Yes. Money well spent. So what time? What time do I need to be like wrapping things, like literally wrapping things up and getting in the car and driving? What? How? How much longer do I need to decorate before I? start getting some honks. So you have about 15 more minutes until you have to hit the road. So okay. get back to work, keep decorating, okay. and then we're going to let you hit hey. the road. Hey, Derek and Courtney, guess what? It's your life. Oh. <laughs> there you go. You got it. Listen, it's Lauren. It's gift that keeps on giving. You are such a good sport, seriously, because I would be mortified. I would be so embarrassed <laughs> doing this. <laughs> I think you would yes. have so much fun with I it. I hope people are out and about, like, <laughs> like driving through You want to show your dance move that you did in the in the uh, promo? What was the dance move? Oh, no. Come on. No. Come on. People saw it once. I don't dance, okay? That's not part of yes, my you deal. you do. Come on. No. You already know the step It wasn't ball a dance move. It literally was just the like shuffle me. shuffle ball change. It was me spinning. No, but then you had, a, like, a fancy stop and wait a minute move. We've got to find that old promo. Do you remember, like, Dee Brown was, like... She shimmied. And, and like, Steph, I don't know. There was, like, some wow. head movements. Yeah. If you don't know what we're talking about, don't worry. We, we'll recreate it, maybe, at some point. Maybe with our new show launch, August oh, 17th. I can't wait. I can't wait to host that dance show called Houston Life. Okay, so a reminder, if you do want to follow along with Lauren, she is live on our Houston Life Facebook page right now. So also, if you have any questions or suggestions uh, about how she could help enhance that design on the HL mobile, then please let her know. She's all ears. And we also have a really cool segment coming up on tomorrow's show. It's all about promoting the next generation of female engineers. We're going to meet a local leader in civil engineering, advocating and supporting STEM education for girls. That is fantastic. Looking forward to that. And after the break, details on the life-changing procedure that allows children living with facial differences to get a brand new smile. That's next. It's your Welcome back. A local children's hospital is dedicated to helping kids with facial differences through facial reanimation. Dr. Fong Nguyen, Director of Craniofacial Surgery at Memorial Hermann and UT Health, is joining us now with more on these procedures. Okay, craniofacial surgery. This is, this is a really big deal. I mean, Doctor, when we say life-changing, we truly mean it because we're talking about children who are born uh, with cleft palates and sometimes missing ears as well. But you can actually help them uh, repair those issues and live a totally normal life. Yeah, you know, July is Cleft and Cranial Facial Awareness Month, and it really encompasses kind of a, a wide variety of uh, different uh, facial differences, including cleft lip, cleft palate, children born without ears or jaws, or born with skull uh, anomalies. And we really want to get the word out there that, you know, kids are the same on the inside, and certainly from a surgeon's perspective, we want to restore. Uh, their livelihood. Absolutely, and give them some hope and their parents some hope as well. Um, something else that's really interesting is this facial palsy. Explain what that is and how common it is. Well, I think most people have heard of Bell's palsy, which sure. is probably the most common uh, source of facial palsy. All told, facial palsy is about one in 5,000 people. Um, Bell's palsy is something that happens uh, without any warning and a lot of people do get better but a, a significant portion don't get better and children it's a little bit different because the reason that uh, you get a facial palsy or one side of your face or both sides of your face don't move can either be something you're born with or it can be from a tumor or it can be from trauma so it really affects the way uh, a way a child lives the way a child perceives themselves and how they grow psychosocially as well as just functionally but that is, that facial palsy that you're talking about, uh, is something that you are able to help families correct, yes? Absolutely, and that's, you know, we, we do have the technology. I think uh, the word is not completely out there that there are people who are living with facial palsy who don't have that hope, don't have that idea that things can be better. But we do have options to improve uh, how the face looks, how it functions, and ultimately, give you a new smile. It's and, and when you're talking about a new smile for a child who's not able 
to smile. And that comes with a lot of communication skills, right? And let's talk about this facial reanimation because to regain a smile, a normal smile for the first time for some of these patients is really remarkable. You know, it's such a, uh, an amazing thing to see a child who had not had an ability to express themselves before now have this new way of doing one of those fundamental things that we all do on a day-to-day -day basis, which is uh, show each other our face and smile and express emotion. Mm -hmm. So being able to provide something new like that is really a life-changing. And Dr. Wynn, a lot of these uh, issues, we mentioned some jaw issues, cleft palates, uh, children being born without ears. These are congenital issues, right? But you also see a lot of patients who go through uh, some, some life changes because of a medical issue. Tell us about one of your patients, Alina, who at 11 years old uh, has had issues after suffering a brain aneurysm. Well, she's a, a wonderful little girl. Um, unfortunately, a few years ago, she had a devastating brain bleed and was found to have a mass of that in her brain stem, something called an AVM. She underwent surgery for that AVM to remove it in order to uh, reduce the risk of more brain bleeds. But unfortunately, that developed into a facial palsy, so she was unable to move uh, half of her face. Um, and this, as you can imagine, is devastating for anybody, but imagine being an adolescent going through all of those changes. So as you can imagine, this was a very, very tough time for her. Mm. Oh, absolutely. And we're looking at video of her and, and, and the progress she is making. Uh, a little bit about your background, Dr. Wynn, is you've spent more than 15 years traveling on missions, performing reconstructive surgeries around the world, uh, especially children with congenital or acquired cleft palates and cranial facial deformities. So you know firsthand that the life-changing life surgeries that these children can have and really giving families hope. And even though we said that you've, you've gone on these missions, these are things that are happening in our own backyard. And so being able to be part of Children's Memorial Hermann Hospital, uh, that's where I had both of my kids. And um, it, it's a fantastic facility. But to be able to have this type of personalized care in our backyard is, is truly remarkable. You're absolutely right. In fact, actually, uh, my daughter was born at Children's Memorial as well, and I can't say enough good things about, about the hospital and all the staff there. Um, as far as traveling around the world, I'll tell you, it is such a humbling experience when you see people from all different races and creeds and, and languages and cultures. There's still the universal thing that I've found. No matter what you look like, a parent always wants the best for their child and always wants their child to have the best future that they can have. So it doesn't really matter how much money you have or what kind of access uh, to care. That is 100% is uh, consistent no matter where you go. So I think having an ability to help in that manner is really extraordinary. And Dr. Wynn, I have to imagine that to be a parent or caregiver or family member of a child who's having one of uh, these issues, it has got to be so terrifying. The range of emotions just must be so extreme. And part of what you have built your career on is not just about treating the problem. It's about evaluating the situation, about creating a diagnosis, creating a treatment plan, and really holding the hands of these family members as they heal through this entire process? Well, I think the most important thing is being able to listen. You know, no, no two patients are the same. No two uh, diagnoses are really are the same. Everyone is going through a private battle that you don't necessarily know about. So I think the most important thing is, is really being on the same team with each other and creating a, a partnership. Um, ultimately, surgery is one aspect of that partnership, but it really, it's a team approach. You have uh, therapists, we have uh, the parental support, the family support, all of that goes into, into play into making the life better for that child. Well, Dr. Fong Nguyen, Director of Craniofacial Surgery at Memorial Hermann and UT Health, thank you so much for your time today. And it really is incredible that we live in a day and time when families have solutions to, you know, what decades ago yeah. wasn't possible. Well, thank you so much for having me. We'll see you soon. For more see information soon. about Children's Memorial Hermann Hospital, visit the website childrens.memorialherman.org or you can simply call 713-222-CARE. Life-changing indeed for a lot of families. All right, shifting gears now. Lauren Kelly is still hard at work doing today's challenge. We're going to check in with her next. Oh, wow. Looks
Well, welcome back. Lauren Kelly is getting ready to hit the road for today's challenge. And uh, I don't know, before she does, I think, Lauren, you should give us a little tour. Show us all your work. I would love to do nothing more than to show off this wonderful Houston Life vehicle, which, by the way, I don't know if you can see it only because we used an orange marker instead of a white, but it says honk here. Honk if you love Houston Life here. Oh, no. Honk if you love Houston Life on the front and on the other side. We got all the balloons on the top. Perfect. The trick is going to be getting out of my driveway so that they don't pop right there. And I have this sign, so if I can get anybody to come out and dance with me, I will hold it up and act a fool. And I was going to put some more things on the back, but the only color streamer that I have left is white, and I don't want people to think that it's a just married mobile. So I might just add mm. like a, a couple more floral decals on this side. I don't think you have time for that. On. Yeah, I don't think I, so either. No. Oh, okay. Well, then this is the finish, but we have Honk, Houston, Honk If You Love Houston Life here. We have the flowers here. We yeah, you did a great job. Um, you did a great job. So there. Okay, yeah. I think it's Yay. time to go. I think you need to get in. Okay, well then yeah. I'm getting in. Let me yeah. get the keys. They're on the other side. Let me get in. Okay. Okay. So, and then All I right. think we're going, she's got the keys. Um, you have your sign okay. in case you need to safely pull yep. over and, you know, take a selfie with people. Correct. Safely. Correct. Safely, Correct. yes. Get in. And then you are going to drive around playing the, you know, theme song of Houston Life. It's the song that's a gift that keeps on giving. Okay. It's your life. Yeah, and really, you're going to have to crank it up. I know we're playing the song now through our control room, but after the break, when we join you, uh, we're going to get that song beamed through your car okay. speaker system. So blast it, okay? Right. Don't be shy. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Lauren, so you're off. There we go. We're, you're going to let you go. You drive around, and we're going to check back in with you. Um, coming up. Okay. We should make predictions right, on how many good. honks you get. Wish me luck. Good I hope luck. you get at least one. I hope there's one honk. <laughs> I'm not yes. sure this Drive. is going to work. Go. Okay, leave. <laughs> get out of here. Go. Hit the road, Jack. Drive. Welcome back, y'all. We are getting some really funny comments about, you know, the Zoom calls gone wrong. And Danny, big fan of the show. We love him. We've met him a few times. Danny says, to the embarrassing Zoom call, I walked in front of my wife's camera with my boxer shorts. Are you sure, Danny, that was an accident? Well, at least he was wearing boxer shorts. <laughs> yeah, There's others that point. haven't been wearing. We do love Danny. Say hi to your wife, Kim Kimberly, for us. Also, Debbie writes in, Lauren is an awesome sport. Perfect person for these yes. challenges. Debbie, I agree because, honestly, I would be so embarrassed doing I know. It. But you would love it, too, Derek. You're such a good sport. Okay, Jerry <laughs> writes in, I will honk when I see you. All right. Jerry, if you could just send us your address, we'll be sure to drive by. To drive. Um, <laughs> Playing, blasting <laughs> so the song. We can get at least uh, one honk. So Lauren is driving now, and just as we were going to commercial break, and she, she got a left honk. the driveway, she got a honk right Yay! away. Right, Lauren? I got a honk. Yeah, you guys, like, just missed it. Of course, isn't that always the way Yes. It works? Uh, I'm going to go down this street. Wait, I don't hear the music. Family that, that's working. Um, we couldn't connect it in <gasps> here because maybe the decorations made it. Hi, hi, oh, guys, no. hi. They're waving. They are giving me very, very... Okay, well, since we're questions. having technical oh, issues, <laughs> you need to sing at the top of your lungs. It's your life, Houston life. Sing it, Lauren. Come on, sing it. Not to me, to the, to the great outdoors. Oh, yeah. Hi! And yo, honk if you love. What's up? Hey, honk. That was them honking. Hi! Hi! Uh, oh, she said hi! Hi! Oh, my God. <laughs> of course, it's in the middle of the day. It's so hot. Nobody's outside. I think you need to find a drive through Can you just go to a drive through <laughs> Courtney, we're not that close to a drive through No. You know, okay. What about a COVID testing site? What about a COVID testing site where everyone's lined up in their cars waiting to get tested? That's perfect. Yeah, we're not going. Hi. Okay, we're going to go on a little bit of a main street right now. I don't know if the balloons are still on top of this vehicle, but um, hi. Just go slowly. Hi. hi. It's totally I fine. hope your hazards are on. <laughs> it's so embarrassing. <laughs> yes, they work. Now they work. So how many honks would you say you're up to now, Lauren? Are we including the ladies waving and like dancing? Yes. Five. Let's, okay, so let's go five. Let's see if this person honks. 
No, she just looked at me very, very strangely. With a <laughs> look of concern. I turn here because there is quite a bit of construction down this road, so I'm going to just turn early before we get to the freeway because I don't think that I could take this vehicle onto the highway. With hi guys, thanks for all your work for the Houston construction. Woo! Yay! I'm sure that house would love to have their construction on the television show. Oh my goodness! <laughs> oh no. my gosh! You're such a trooper, Lauren. You're such a good sport. Very close. So if we had enough time, I could go. But if I drive by honking while her child or her children are napping, she will murk. <laughs> Well, Lauren, you be careful out there. And because it is Thursday, that means tomorrow's the last day of the challenge. And here's your hint for tomorrow's challenge. I know you're behind the wheel today, but tomorrow we hope you're ready to bust a move. Oh. Wait, wait for tomorrow for more details. <laughs> this song Derek's is feeling it. Stuck in my head all day. I know. Lauren, we got to leave it there. It's the Good end of the job, show. Lauren. Great to see you. Be safe out there. Bye. We'll see, see you tomorrow. tomorrow.